Hiya, welcome to part 9 of uh, the New Age Religion and the Saviour Complex. Yep, I was talking about um, yeah, how in you know, the whole uh, imagery of, of the Christian, um, the Christian um, religion um, when it comes to uh, the imagery of Jesus, the blonde, uh, you know, majestic saviour, European version of him anyway. Um, very much like the uh, people refer to the um, blonde Nordic, tall, blonde, good looking Nordic aliens that are um, often, you know, the good guys. You know, it's, it's almost mirrors the Jesus figure, doesn't it? Can you see, can you see the just absolute connection there? Um, and you have the, the angels along with Jesus and and Yahweh, the good God, and and um, who who is in heaven, um, and and who you know fights with the devil, um, the Satan, uh, and his fallen angels, uh, and his demons, who are often you know the demons and the uh, you know nasties on churches. They're depicted as as reptilian gargoyles. You know, Alan, what pointed this out? Look at that. The the um, the powers behind the churches and the priests used the, you know, the basic psychology, the fears. They they gave their fear a um, an expression, um, and then they you know on the outer side walls of these churches, they gave their fear a very basic expression of these twisted gargoyles, these reptilian-looking gargoyles, and the people go in the churches. For shelter, because not only were they uh, physically racked with pain and death and suffering and poverty and uh, fear of punishment, of torture and death from the king, they were also psychologically, spiritually racked by um, punishments beyond the grave, um, racked with you know punishments of bur you know eternal um, burning in hell and everything like that, and promised to heaven if you do as you're told. So they were being psychologically um, uh, bombarded as well, and they gave their they gave their um, fear, the, the priests did, they gave their fear a physical presentation. So that an, an object for them to look at and say, you know, look, this is what they look like. There's demons down there uh, in hell torturing you with the devil. And they look like that. And, and, you know, and you wouldn't want to come across one. You better stay your prayers, you know. So they had that to deal with and they're, they're undernourished and probably, you know, very childlike. They, they believed it. It's not their fault when they're being pushed that hard, I guess. But um, it takes a lot to kind of see things for what they are and some courage. Uh, more so back in them days, much, much more so. I think it was much, much harder. I don't think I'll stand a chance. Um, so take that, you know, allegory, take the, the physical rep representation of this and then, you know, put a modern take on it and the um, and Christ and his angels become the uh, Pleiadians, the um, tall blonde, um, angelic uh, extraterrestrials um, with their um, in their UFOs, just just like that. Um, I was the book I was mentioning that the chap gave me, the um, kind of Christian Jehovah's Witness group. Same thing. Um, and the the reptilians, um, the reptilians are the gargoyles and the demons of the medieval ages, but they are space reptilians. They're they're. Um, they're from the planet uh, Draconian, they're, you know, um, they're, you know, the dragon race or whatever. They're, they're the, they're the um, demons and always were. Um, it wasn't the fact that they were gargoyles and, and churches. They really were extraterrestrials, but they were disguising themselves. Um, and now that we've moved into modern times, they move, you know, they're revealing th themselves or the truth is being revealed, you know, that kind of thing. Um, that's what we're led to believe. When it's just probably a new a new spin on it, they just you know a modern inter inter a modern um, spin on an old um, control system, psychological control system. Um, you know, you don't think most you know you, well you do think of things like that, but when you are bombarded with all this stuff, it, you know it goes over your head sometimes. It went it went over my head a little. That's why I, I'm admitting um, here, you know I'm. You know the whole David Icke um, thing with the reptilians and everything. Um, it 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 becomes a a uh, obsession for a lot of people, 
a massive fixation and an obsession and a distraction. Even, I believe David Icke is honest when he's talking about this. He's not there to pull the wool over our eyes. I still like David Icke, I've got a lot of time for him. But, um, without him knowing it, um, when, he put, when he speaks about the whole reptilian agenda thing, um, it acts as a distraction because the, uh, the common person finds it hard to take it seriously. When you know, here oh, when you say you know, oh, you know, you know, refuse vaccines, don't give them to your children, don't blush brush with the fluoride toothpaste, try and get organic, give them organic food, you know, try and homeschool them and all of that, and and um, the um, the Illuminati are Satanists and they are um, controlled by reptilians. As soon as a common person sees the hears the word reptilian, they go, oh, this all uh, you're one of those, you know, and then then they say, oh, just give their children the vaccines and carry on as normal. So um, that's another point to, to it. Um, and, but I will say I'm open-minded and I, I sense and I know there's, some, there's more to this reality. There's more to the, the um, human subconscious than, um, than I, that I discovered, I know. And um, you only look at the, um, the famous, was it uh, Jung? Um, and the and you spoke about the archetypes and the power of the of the subconscious and how it can manifest you know in to this reality in the form of um, of visions and, and apparitions and, and things like that. Um, that's a, that's something interesting as well, right? Directly connected to this, they say that when enough people are together and they're believing in the same thing and they're focusing their psychic energy, they can manifest um, apparitions of beings. It's not just the fact that they see it, it's that even people who aren't um, connected to them will, will be able to see it as well. It's uh, like a massive concentration of, of human psychic energy. And I think there was an event that happened in the First World War where people, both the soldiers saw an um, apparition, I think it was a giant um, uh, image of the Virgin Mary kind of coming through, flying through the sky. And um, it was, they say, a psychic apparition of their their, um, their, the, you know, their, perhaps the, the goddess in them, they're connecting with the goddess archetype for protection and, and for courage and for, for comfort. And um, that's interesting as well because uh, they say, um, looking at this is Desarian, Michael Desarian's work, when he was looking at, I think he was looking at Jung, the, the psychologist, was saying that um, deep, deep down in our subconsciousness, um, before you know, just before you get the um, as as deep as you can go, when you when you actually um, you know discover the so-called silent witness, the, the the real the highest part of yourself, um, God, if you want to call it that. Before then, there's there's this. I think they call it the animus, if I'm right. Um, if I get names wrong, I apologise. But I'm just trying to give you the idea of the concept here. I think it's called the animus, and for for women, it's it's a um, it's a male god archetype, and for for men, it's a female goddess archetype. So deep within, say men, we have a, an animus in us, this goddess. Um, and it's interesting because all ships are female, and you have a picture of a goddess on the front. And in those men, when they, you know, there's a lot of uh, war, a lot of pain, a lot of psych, you know, conflict, psychic. Um, conflict, there's maybe a massive releases of energy that they didn't know how to channel and direct and it appeared you know, as a physical manifestation of this, of this goddess it's kind of amazing isn't it um, if that, you know, because there probably was there UFO technology over back then, don't know, it could have been so um, that's interesting and the Foo Fighters I think they were, they were called these, these plasma balls that were seen, Thomas Sherdlin talks a lot about that, it's really interesting how they were created by, with a, by a psychic kind of manifestation of people's fears, maybe in, in the war and everything like that and they were shown the videos of UFOs and alien invasions and they appeared uh, something like a UFO in the sky, very interesting um, very interesting indeed <clears throat> and um, this rise of the saviour savior kind of um, uh, program complex is, is in the new major movement. I mean, <clears throat> th these things can happen with, with tragedy and and, um, and wars and and and, uh, and hardship. And 
really, 9-11 could be a symbol of that, couldn't it? That we, you know, where the West was really hit. Um, um, and it changed people forever, and uh, people were living more in fear, especially in America. But I think the whole world was affected by it, wasn't it? People were living in fear, and... Um, And it, you know, they needed something to cling to. I think uh, a new something that strengthened their faith. And and with the recession as well, people's lives have changed. They're not so easy now. People have lost jobs. People are homeless. Um, so individually, for those people that are suffering, they're feeling it. But but collectively, uh, as humans in the psyche, you know, we're we're probably feeling all of this as well. All of the all of the anxieties that maybe you're feeling right now. You've been feeling it for a good few years. You know, I've been feeling kind of anxieties for you know over a couple of years and it's not going away and maybe we're yeah we're all feeling this um and so this is the time when your psychic defenses are down you're vulnerable you can find yourself being over uh, fixated and a little bit obsessed with these uh um cults or the you know these these alternative researchers that push the whole alien savior thing you can find yourself wanting drifting there you know so as as Buddha said, uh, I think be mindful of yourself. Always be mindful. Um, it's always important. Um, so, just a few more bits and pieces to discuss on uh, part nine, I think, um, and I'll be with you right then. <laughs>